Hi, Kennedy Hall here. So we haven't been told the truth about this COVID, Corona, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is not a conspiracy theory video. In fact, everything that I'm going to say is information that we'll link in the show notes. And all of it is from what we'd call mainstream sources. So a lot of things that I've read from have been from papers in the UK, um, Italian newspapers, studies from the CDC, uh, various universities, um, things from the actual people who made up the model for the contagiousness of the virus itself out of London, England, um, Canadian newspapers, American newspapers, et cetera, you know, go on and on and on. Lots of people on Twitter, um, and then it links to their articles, et cetera. Some people actually doing firsthand reporting. I'm not going to say while I'm speaking every single thing that I'm citing, because honestly, I'll probably make a mistake. And the last thing I want is to say, you know, so-and-so said in some British newspaper, and this actually turns out to be an Australian newspaper. And then people will say, look, he doesn't know what he's talking about because he thought it was uh, British, but it was actually Australian. Let's not listen to this guy. So I'll let the information speak for itself. And, and there you go. Now, I'm not saying that <clears throat> people who have any sort of sickness are not suffering. I'm not saying that whatsoever. And I actually do think that as far as uh, outbreaks of viruses go, this is a very real one. And I think that, um, you know, people should be careful. If you want to stay home, whatever. I'm not saying leave your houses. You can't leave your houses. You want to go to the mall? Good luck. It's not open, right? It is what it is. Um, uh, but I am just saying that what we're being told is not true. And it's not just a little bit off. It's in some cases, as we'll see, categorically false. And that's not good. Because here we sit, and all of us are basically being told by all of our governments in one fashion or another, that we have to stay in our houses, that we can't stand more than you know five, six feet, whatever it is, away from somebody else. We've been told how many people can be at our homes. We were, we're even being told we can't go to church, which as a Catholic is not something that I can support because uh, that's just against the way that our faith works in most cases. And even in many cases, our diocese have even stopped things like baptisms and confessions, which I'm not even sure if is completely lawful if you, if you look at the various codes and the various theologians. But anyway, uh, it's a problem. We're being told we can buy and so many small businesses are going to be destroyed. Not just, you know, hey, local restaurant, they're going to have a bad month and the stimulus packages are going to help. The stimulus packages are not going to save most of these businesses and they're going to be destroyed. Okay. What you have are hardworking people who their whole lives, they've been working on something for 30 or 40 years, restaurant, business, whatever. And people are saying things like, well, they can just apply for unemployment. It's not that simple. They don't know how to apply for unemployment and it's causing them a great stress and they're losing tons and tons of their money. Now, I'm going to, uh, uh, talk about various things and I'm going to link or I'm going to look at my phone a lot. I'm not doing that because I'm texting or on Twitter. I'm doing that because I want to make sure I get my notes right. Okay. First thing that's really scary about how they're telling us these things, the deaths of people already sick and dying. So elderly people with comorbidities, which means they have things like cancer. They have diabetes. They have some sort of lung problem already. They have heart problems. They have something that's pathologically ill about them, which will cause a premature death already. People who have those illnesses, if they die and they test positive for the coronavirus on their death certificate or the statistics that we're getting nonetheless, I don't know if it's on their certificates, it's being said that they have died because of the corona. That is not honest. In fact, if you look at the Canadian statistics every year, and I can only not speak for Canada because that's where I live. If you look at the Canadian statistics every year for leading causes of death, there's a list of, a list of about 20 of them. And we'll link this. It's from Stats Canada or Canada.ca. I can't remember. And in there, the first five or six of them, um, they are things you would expect, you know, heart disease, bad cancers, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, the things that people generally speaking die from, especially as they get older, those are the, the, the general causes. And we're talking about premature, we're talking about deaths, they die because of these things, right? There is also a category for old age in various death things. Anyway, once you get to about number six or seven, it has a category and it might be six, seven, or eight. Once again, we'll link it. I don't shoot me for getting the numbers wrong. And I'm, I'm doing my best here. Once you get to category six, seven, or eight, it actually has a category called flu and pneumonia. The reason for that is because when, uh, and I can attest this as somebody who has gone into the hospital for pneumonia and you know spent time there, had to have the oxygen thing. I wasn't on a ventilator, but I had the ventilator and I had to have the mask and whatever for a time. And then I was discharged and came home and healed up at, at home, <clears throat> as many people do. Um, 
When people die because of complications due to respiratory illnesses, they label it as flu or pneumonia because there are various state there are various strains of the flu and there are lots of different strains of things like other coronaviruses because this is just one coronavirus that we're experiencing right now. And pneumonia is a complication. So for example, you could have bacterial pneumonia, you could have uh, you could have viral uh, pneumonia, you could have acute just like with um bronchitis, you can have bacterial bronchitis, you can have viral bronchitis. That just means that they act different ways and they respond to different medicines and they can be more severe. You can have walking pneumonia. You know, there was a gentleman a couple of years ago here in the area that I live in and it was in the papers and he had dropped dead from walking pneumonia um, and it had gotten really serious. He didn't really think he was that sick because it was walking pneumonia. So he could go around and he thought he was fine and he died and it was in the papers and he was a young man, 30, 40 years old, something like that. Um, but the point is, is that in Canada, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, I want to say it's under 10,000 and above 5,000. Uh, and we'll, we'll double check that once again. But lots of people die every single year in Canada, more than are projected to die from this coronavirus thing at, at this point um, in Canada, if not from the projections from the hypothetical stuff or from the actual numbers from the hospitals. It's not even approaching that in the slightest, even with the, the, the supposed peak coming soon and things like that. And it wasn't even getting close to that before the lockdowns, which people need to understand. Because anyway, so... There are lots of reasons why people die. And, 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 and every year when they record the deaths from things like flu and pneumonia, they just say flu and pneumonia deaths. They don't say on the stats, you know, we tested and they had, you know, virus H1N1. We tested and they did it. They might do that in various epidemics and pandemics, but they don't always do that. They sure as heck don't have an 85 year old man come in who is suffering from liver cancer and takes a turn for the worst and gets pneumonia and dies. They don't say his cause of pneumonia was his cause of death is pneumonia. They might say he died of old age from complications with pneumonia, but they won't put his primary cause of death in the statistics as being pneumonia because he died of old age. And this is coming from also the Italian doctors. So right now in Italy, the, the deaths last time I checked some around nine, 10,000, I can't quite remember, but the point is there's a doctor and we'll link him in the things. And he's from one of the major hospitals working in the Northern Italy. And he said, I numeri sono generosi. The numbers are generous. And what he's saying by that, and he goes on to explain, and this is an article from, I believe the telegraph UK. Um, it's also in the Financial Times. I think there's another one that has the same quotation. And he says, we are putting down if anybody for any reason whatsoever dies right now during this epidemic, pandemic, and we test them and they have the virus, we're saying that that's the cause of their death. But he said many of these people even have two or three comorbidities at a time. That means somebody is very old. Because the average age of death in Italy is 81. And I have much a lot of Italian family. So this is something that I know a lot of people are scared about. I'm not saying that it's not real fear. I'm not saying that the people aren't scared. But you get but if you look at the Italian numbers, it's about 12% of the people who are dying as supposed coronavirus deaths. Only 12% of those people are people who don't already have a major contributing factor, like being extremely old or having other things that are going to kill them very soon anyway. You know, listen, we've all had grandparents or great grandparents who have passed away in their 80s and 90s. Okay. And one thing that's common is, you know, aunt or grandma so and so, she breaks her hip, she goes to the hospital. While she's there, she catches a cold. And unfortunately, she doesn't recover because the cold becomes pneumonia. That happens all the time. We don't say uh, this could have been prevented because there's no reason she should have died from pneumonia. Grandma so and so was 91 years old and broke her hip. She had no immunities to various things. And this is why you stay out of nursing homes in general when you're sick. The average age of death in Italy is 81 years old and only 12%, which is around a thousand people. And remember, we're, we're hearing that there is, you know, 10,000 deaths, whatever, all from coronavirus. Except the problem is even from their own doctors, one of their major guys in their, and this is also interpreting the numbers from the National Institute of Health from Italy. Only 12% are what we could, what we, sh what we should actually consider as specific coronavirus deaths. The rest are people who are severely ill <clears throat> and in their fallen state. They get something and they may or may not die from it. They're not even telling us if they die from it. it. Right now, the leading cause of death in the USA, for example, I believe is heart disease. And there's about a thousand people who die every day. <clears throat> so if you take that same logic from the Italian thing, and it's happening all over the world, if somebody goes into the hospital and dies of a heart attack, but in their postmortem, they test them to see for their statistics if they have the coronavirus, then they'll actually put down that they died as comp Then they'll put that cause of death coronavirus. Now, some people may think, think that's not true. Well, it's happening. 
and it's happening in Italy and it's happening all over the place. Okay. Um, furthermore, okay. The numbers that we're getting are only being taken from positive tests. So when you say something like, you know, 80,000 people have it and 1000 people have died, they'll say, well, divide those numbers together and we'll get a percentage, whatever it is, you know, 1.8%. That's not accurate because in a lot of places, like in Canada, for example, you're only getting tested if you have symptoms severe enough for you to seek treatment. And in fact, our health system here, if you go and do the test on Canada.ca, it lists various things. I, I did it to see like what it would say. And it says, have you been out of the country? No. Have you done this? No. Okay. Do you have any of these symptoms? And then it says runny nose, well, not runny nose. That was before. It says sore throat, sneezing, if you're sneezing. So if you have a bad, bad HEPA filter in your, in your air filtration system in your house and it's causing you to have allergies, you should stay home for 14 days. If you have any of these things, sore throat, whatever, whatever, stay home. What are they telling us about the coronavirus? They're saying that the vast majority of people, and we'll link something of this, 95%, whatever the number is, have mild to no symptoms, which means many people will not even have any symptoms. And many people will have symptoms that are as mild as sneezing, sore throat. They'll think they have the common cold. It could have been going on for months like this. And they're not getting tested. So this is the thing. You got to put your thinking cap on here and go, wait. So they're telling us that uh, the virus is extremely contagious and it's been around for longer than we thought because that's coming out as well. And then they're telling us that the numbers are whatever they are based on the positive tests and deaths as a result of that. But then when you call into the various telehealth and telemed places or go to the government websites like here in Canada and you say you have the symptoms, what do they tell you? They tell you to stay home. So they're not testing you. Now, if you do look at the amount of people tested in Canada, it's in the tens of thousands, might be higher than that now. And it's a small fraction of those people who are testing positive, even with the symptoms. That's very interesting. Okay. So the point is, is that we don't know how many people have this, but we know it's going to be much higher than what they're saying to us. And if you take this, if you say a thousand people died out of a hundred thousand and you say 1% of the people died. But that only includes the 100,000 people with the symptoms severe enough to go to the hospital, the doctor to get tested. That is not an accurate number considering what they're telling us is that the vast majority of people who have this over 90% will not have symptoms strong enough to seek medical attention. If you actually look at the numbers in places where they're doing tons and tons and tons of testing, where it's actually a good swath of the population where it's statistically relevant, numbers are coming in somewhere under 1%, which is commensurate with the flu as far as death rates. Furthermore, the originators of this model out of England, the Imperial College or something like that, they had originally put out something that was quite scary. It was, you know, 2 million Americans would die, 500,000 Brit <coughs> people from Britain would die. But then they came out late, a couple weeks later, <coughs> they came out a couple weeks later and they said, oh, we're basically way off. We expect about 20,000 UK people might die from this. And this was before the lockdown started in the UK that they did this test. So this wasn't saying... Uh, including a potential lockdown. This was this study came out the day after the lockdown started, which means it was been working on for the week or two prior to that. <clears throat> Look at the statistics for how many people die in the UK from flu every year. It's around that. Now, <clears throat> ventilators aside, the amount of people in hospitals from this is way lower than your average flu season. <clears throat> in America, there's about between 20 to 60,000, depending on the year, people who die from the flu. <clears throat> And there are hundreds of thousands of people who are hospitalized. And that needs to be taken into account too, because they're not telling us what they mean by hospitalized. If you go to the hospital and you spend six hours there, seven hours there under care <clears throat> on an IV vent, uh, you know, with oxygen or something, does that count as being hospitalized? Because if that's the case, then if they're saying things like, you know, 10,000 people being hospitalized, that just might mean that 10,000 people are being checked into the hospital and then discharged. And it counts as a hospitalization on the test or on the list. That's very different than somebody, you know, hospitalized for six months. Those are different categories. But ventilators aside, the flu is a respiratory illness. 60,000 people upwards of 60,000 people die every year in the USA. And the CDC estimates that up to 60,000 people already died this year by March in the USA. Take flu, flu season is what? October, November to April, May. 
So that's just the deaths. And we know that the flu, uh, it's under 1% as far as fatalities. So there's been hundreds of thousands of people in the States who have been hospitalized because of the flu in some capacity. How are we able to cope with all those? And they're talking about America here, but I'm living in Canada. How are we able to cope with all those hundreds of thousands of people that had to be hospitalized in some fashion for a respiratory illness? But right now we've got a fraction of those amount of people in the hospitals. And people are saying things like hospitals look like it's 9-11. There was actually someone saying that hospitals look like it's 9-11, a reporter that I'll link to in the thing. <clears throat> he went and did a video just recording of what was going on at a major hospital downtown Brooklyn, and there was nobody there. There was nobody waiting in line to be tested. There was also a CBC, <clears throat> a CB, CBS, sorry, CBC is Canadian, a CBS news uh, thing, media thing. And uh, it's, it was they were caught using footage from an Italian hospital to, to, to describe the conditions in New York City. Why would they have to use footage from somewhere else that's having a hard time if it was as bad where they were? Why are they lying? Why are they lying? Seriousness of this thing aside, if the governments and the news media are lying to you and then telling you how far away from, like they're basically telling us how we have to live based on things they're telling us that are not true. You don't need to be a master in history to know that that's the types of things you see out of the various communist nations. That should be alarming to people. Um, furthermore uh, the numbers for deaths in New York City right now per week are lower than they were before the virus now people say staying home but the problem is the numbers for deaths in New York City the vast majority of them have to do with things like heart disease heart attacks etc not from things like car accidents and stuff How are the deaths lower than they are on average if so many people are being affected by this? Sorry, I don't have Corona. I just have a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Um, Now, as far as Italy goes, we're seeing all these pictures of um, they're making new hospital centers and things like that, they're calling it. Well, here's the problem. The same thing happened during H1N1. Remember that? 12,000 Americans died from that and 60 million or so were infected. <clears throat> About 10,000 Canadians or so were hospitalized as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> what happens when you have an epidemic or a pandemic is you build extra care centers because what's also happening right now is that many people are being infected with the coronavirus while they're in the hospital because that's where the elderly and the sick are who are more vulnerable to everything. So there's an outbreak of something And I'm not saying this is not serious and it's not an outbreak. I'm just saying that they're lying to us about everything, which is insane. When there's an outbreak, they move the extremely vulnerable people to different places. Or sorry, they move the people who have the containable virus. They move the people with the virus to somewhere else. So for example, in these care centers in Italy, you go into the doctors and it's like, I think you have Corona. They send you to the new, you know, mall or whatever they've turned into a place that has a bunch or supermarket that has a bunch of beds in it. And you stay there. And they monitor you there. And they only put people there that have the coronavirus. That's common practice. So if people start saying to you, and also Italy should not be, a, we should not be looking to Italy as an example of how to deal with this. In, and, and we shouldn't be looking to Italy for good information. Listen, I love Italy. You know, Forza Italia. I'm an Italian citizen. It's a wonderful place. But Italy has the most corrupt and inept government practices like on the face of the earth. It's insane. So anything out of Italy should be suspect in the first place. <clears throat> You know, if you go to Italy and you try to go to a a panneria, which is somewhere you get bread, there'll be like a sign on the door saying like we're out of bread for the day. You know, like they just, Italy, I love that. It's a wonderful place, but they don't have a great infrastructure on the best of times. Okay. Many people are catching in the hospitals. So this is what happens during the swine flu. Now, the swine flu was called a pandemic. Look it up. It was a pandemic. We didn't shut down society. And in the USA, they didn't call a state of emergency until a, a thousand people had died because who was the president? It was Barack Obama and he couldn't do anything wrong. Now, the swine flu also, and this is according to the CDC, primarily affected children and younger adults. <clears throat> Why didn't we lock down society when young people were the primary targets of the swine flu? Once again, the average deaths that are coming in from <clears throat> this uh, corona thing are people who are very vulnerable and old and are going to die from something very soon anyway. As, but that's the circle of life. I mean, people are, people are afraid of death. 
I've seen things like nobody has to die. With all due respect, everybody has to die. If you are a human being and you breathe air, there'll be a day where you stop. Everybody has to die. Now, they didn't lock down the world for the swine flu and it killed hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. And a lot of those people were children. I'll end here just quickly, but <clears throat> we're being lied to. We're not being told the truth. Most of this information is not true. Um, much of it is is, is fabricated. Um, we've had basically all of our freedoms taken away over something that is speculative. Once again, it might be serious, but you don't take away people's freedoms because something's speculative. Within just two weeks, we have seen the people who originated the studies in the UK come out and change their tune and saying they were off by like <clears throat> hundreds and thousands of percent. That's huge. This same logic that we're seeing right now, within a moment, we have seen governments and media and people in general are ganging up on other people and just saying things like, if you leave your house, you're a murderer. That's insane. And also there's a, there's a trend I see going on on social media. And right I was off social media for a while because of this thing I'm doing. And I came on to see what the world was saying as it was losing its mind. And people, it's almost like a sport. And a lot of reasonable people that I thought were reasonable are doing this as well. They have put themselves in the camp that this thing must be potentially the next Spanish flu. <clears throat> so they're liking or they're retweeting or they're, you know, whatever on Instagram, whatever the verbiage would be for Instagram or Facebook, I don't know, sharing. <clears throat> they're basically sharing everything possible of every case that comes up within their friends or their followers list or whatever of somebody saying that they have it or they know somebody who has it. With all due respect, if we did that uh, every year with just the flu in North America, <clears throat> there would be hundreds of thousands. Well, there's millions of people infected by the flu. There are hundreds of thousands of people who are hospitalized for those things every year. Can you imagine the mayhem? It's not genuine. It is disingenuous to find every single case you can find of people on social media who have uh, this virus and then share and retweet and like that thing in order that more people will see it. It's not accurate. We don't do that with every other illness. Why are we doing it with this? And in fact, up upwards of 60,000 people in the USA, like I've said, have already died from the flu. Why weren't all their names shared? I'm going to do one last thing here because I live in Canada <clears throat> and our prime, our prime minister is one of the most pro-death people on earth. He's actually on record saying that he's okay with abortion up to the moment a child's born. You can check it out on YouTube. We euthanize the elderly in Canada. Hundreds of thousands of babies are aborted every year in Canada. This is not about saving human life. And listen, all the health people who are freaking out about this, I understand your job is extremely difficult. I, was, I heard a story. <clears throat> Somebody had to show someone was dying in the hospital, not from Corona, but it was on quarantine, the whole hospital. So the person was dying. And the nurse had to hold up a phone from FaceTime with FaceTime and show the person's spouse that, they, that the person was dying. Of course, our nurses and our doctors are losing it and feeling overwhelmed. Of course they are. You're basically telling them that they're walking into a nuclear minefield and that if they do the wrong thing, everybody's going to die. I don't care if you've got one person in your hospital or a thousand and one people in your hospital that are sick with this thing. If that's your mentality, you're going to, your nerves are going to be shot. It is unfair what we are doing to the nurses and things like this and the pressure that we're putting on them. Considering the fact that the numbers just aren't there. Listen, we got through the swine flu in Canada. We got through it in the USA everywhere. And there were hundreds of thousands of cases and hundreds of thousands of millions of millions of cases, sorry, worldwide, hundreds of millions and hundreds of thousands of deaths. We are not being reasonable about this. And listen, if you're a Canadian, you remember taking this course, and I don't know what the grade would be in the USA. We take the Canadian history course, grade 10, and we got to read about the, you know, the Soviet Union, World War II, and all those kinds of things. Go read what Lenin said about spreading lies. He said that spreading, he said that a lie is no, I'm paraphrasing, but a lie is no longer a lie if you tell it enough, it becomes a truth. A lie becomes a truth if you tell it enough. 
this is not true what they're telling us. This is not some conspiracy theory. This is just from mainstream news sources, <clears throat> government organizations. If this thing was as bad as they're telling us, then why are they faking footage? Why are they doing shoddy mathematics? Why are they using studies that are no longer valid? Why are they being so why are they being so reckless with all the information? Why have they told every single person basically on earth that they have to stay home, that kids can't go to parks and close their churches for something that we don't even know the extent of it? We don't know the extent of a lot of things. We don't close down the world for those things. We have been lied to. And this is the initial stages, or maybe it's the culmination, I don't know, of essentially a soft communist takeover of many of our countries. <laughs>